Standing in front of the tall gate, Danzel raised his sword up high and swung against the gate. Asterisk tink. Hitting the gate that was seemingly made out of stone, the sword that Nursen created for him broke into two pieces, with the blade falling to the ground. Ugh. What is this made from? Danzel said frustrated. Reaching out his hand and touching the gate, a floating window appeared in front of him. Entrance gate of the sacred treasury of Azara. Out of the few places out in the desert, the sacred treasury was one of the few where it didn't he get affected by the event of the past. The gate array that survived enchants the gate to be near indestructible as long as mana is being input. An array? So there is a barrier in this whole building. Danzel said as he checked the floor and walls only to see similar descriptions. I am surprised that you noticed the arrays. Nursen Ra said with an indifferent voice. Even if I did figure why this place is so sturdy, I got no clue how to get past it. Danzel said. He didn't he bother explaining that the only way he found out about the arrays was thanks to the status descriptions that he had access to. You don't he have to worry about that. I can open the gate. But not right now. Why not? Does it require some sort of preparations? Well, it us because of you. The gate is so made that once attacked, for some sort of time it will go into a lockdown state, making except the master of this place to open the door. As long as this lockdown state is active, we can t get in. Seriously? Yes. Turning to look back at the gate, he cursed at the gate. Walking back, Danzel looked at the half of the sword. Can you repair or create another one of those? Danzel asked. The next moment, the nearby sand floated in the air and flew towards the broken sword and fixing it to his original. Nodding in satisfaction of the wonders of Nursen S. Magic, Danzel reached where he could see all the stairs who by now were engulfed with a bunch of sand. Staring for a bit, Danzel sends out a command. Skull Claw, rise up. The moment the command finished, the piles of sand shook and then the next moment exploded in the air. Appearing from the sands came the appearance of Skull Claw looking towards his leech. Shaking her body like how a wet dog would do, she threw the piled up sand away from her body and walked towards her leech. It seems like I will soon have to remove that flesh from you. Danzel muttered to himself as he saw the part where she was hit with the ice magic falling to the ground. Though undead could regenerate their body, that wasn't he the case for zombies that Skull Claw essentially was. She was capable to regenerate her bones just like any other skeleton with the usage of dead mana, but such a rule didn't he apply to the flesh. Though he didn't he know the exact reason for that, he guessed that the flesh didn't he align with the dead mana itself with a zombie stage. Since he had experimented with the rune that turned a corpse into a ghoul, he obviously checked the ghoul as status. And among one of its abilities was cannibalize, which essentially allowed them to regenerate their decayed flesh by eating the flesh of a living that hadn't he died long ago. That can wait for later, though. Danzel thought as he watched how the wraith-possessed body started to rise while holding the body of the explorers of before. Did every one of them die? Danzel said with a hint of pity hidden in his voice. Walking towards the top, the wraiths threw the bodies of the explorers in front of him and kneeled with their valges in front of him. Only in the fact that they were kneeling towards their true master, who was Nurse and Ra. Hmm. If those guys together with the magic caster were the strongest, then I don't he think it s necessary to put wraiths within them. Danzel said as looked in the crystal. I agree. Nursen said which after his crystal let out dead mana fly towards the few corpses. Seeing that, Danzel imminently figured out what Nursen Ra tried to do. Lesser rays undead, huh? Danzel commented as he saw the corpses stand up and make small growl sounds. Lesser? What do you mean by that? Nursen, of course, didn't he like much of Danzel declaring his spell as lesser. Danzel, in response, simply shrugged his shoulders. Yes, lesser. As this is the true Ray's undead.
Danzel said indifferently as he shot his dead mana in the remaining explorers. Be made to serve. With the dead opening their eyes, the newly created zombies looked at Danzel. Though similar, my version makes the zombies a bit stronger and holds better understanding in your S order's intent. I see. Nurse and Ra said after a long moment of silence. It seems like you guide you will into the dead mana as there are in the middle of transforming into an undead and then. Ignoring the whispers from the crystal in his hand, Danzel walked towards the only one person who they didn't he turn as undead. Honestly, I thought you would choose him as your vessel that the other magic caster. The man laying in the ground dead was the most powerful magic caster sharing his tear he faced till yet. He honestly found the man quite strong. His fast casting spells were as strong as his gale mana blade, which he cast much faster than his wind blade. If they were to fight only in long range, then he of no doubt would have lost, for obvious reasons. But even if they were to fight on equal terms, without Nursen it would have been very difficult to avoid the spell, Chaos Core. The only way to fight back against that was to cast Stonewall, under the guy's feet to stop his casting, but in a place such as this, where he wasn't he capable to move his mana through the ground that option was scratched away. Wasn't he, he powerful enough to use as a vessel? Powerful might he has been, but he was one with bad blood. Nursen Ra said with a cold voice, Blood. Looking at the blood of the magic caster, Danzel didn't he understand Nursen Ra's meaning of bad. Raising his hand to guide his dead mana towards the outside, Nursen Ra interrupted him. Wait, don't he turn him into an undead yet? Though one with bad blood, his body has much better usage than becoming a part of those. Nursen said as he looked at the zombies in disgust. Though he hadn't he a face to see his expression, just by his speech Danzel saw the hints of disgust. Storing the corpse of the magic caster into his storage ring, he seated in front of the gate waiting. After several hours inside the sacred treasury, on the other side of the wall, are you telling us that we suck here like some trapped rats? One of the villagers said as he pointed at the large gate in outrage. Yes. Sasha believed the cruel truth of their situations towards the villagers. Together with her and the people who managed to escape Danzel's manslaughter, they explained the situations outside and we're for evident reasons stressed out. Learning that most fighters died fighting a bunch of undead with a sword-wielding necromancer leading them was quite too much for a few people to keep calm and look at the bigger picture. Are we supposed to starve here to death? We only have for a few weeks' worths of food in here. They say that in face of death, people show their true colors. And that couldn't be more true at the villages who would usually joke among themselves to start cursing at each other. As Sasha dear, would those sand puppets really be able to break through? A woman said with concern. Yes, I am sure of it. Don't worry. Sarah said in a calm tone to comfort the scared woman. Starting at the 40 or more sand soldiers that she created, she felt tired. With those numbers, we might be able to do it. She thought to herself. Though the past hour, she was creating sand soldiers and recovering her mana to make more of them. But soon she was reaching her limit. Everyone please stay calm. I will handle the necromancer and the undead, just like I had done. Saying so, everyone calmed down and whispered to themselves. They all knew Valdens as a strong magic caster, but if they all had to decide which one is stronger then they would have decided for Sarah. With her being literary a one-man army with her sand soldiers, she fended off countless bandits and beasts out of their village. Yeah, that's Sasha we are talking about, Dash. She can definitely defeat the evil magic caster Dash. The goddess is watching over us, Dash. While others tried to comfort themselves and others prayed to a goddess. The large gate that was supposed to be only capable to open from their side started to open, explore new ovals on Envelby. Gong. Ah. The gate. One of the purples said as he pointed at the gate. And with the gate opening, 
the undead, and their lives walked inside. Asterisk GRRKKK. The continuous sound of the gate caught everyone's attention. The small bits of sands that were stuck between feel above the walking undead, who were being led by their eventual lieges. Everyone prepare. Sasha yelled to the stunned and scared people. Looking at Marco, who was trying to bring the people under control, and then back at the sword-wielding necromancer, she clenched her staff much harder than before. I want to let you hurt anyone. She yelled at Danzel. Looking at her, Danzel raised and pointed his sand-created weapon to them. Go. Gwiag. Gwi. Gwi dash. Skull claw and the remaining of his own undead imminently rushed towards the living with oozing killing intent. Even though the wraiths didn't t obey his orders, they too rushed upon Nursin Ra as command. Sarah, who saw didn't he wait much longer to command her own sand soldiers to face the undead while the few villagers picked up a weapon and started to prepare to fight for their life. Among them, the few who run away were the fastest to reach with their bows. Releasing their bowstring and letting tens of arrows fly loose, the villagers wanted almost to celebrate when they saw that they hit one of the zombies. Unfortunately, the undead who were hit by the bows didn't tea slow them in the slightest. Instead, in the eyes of the villagers, they looked like they were going faster upon hitting them. That undead, though the first to fall from the spears of the sand soldiers, piercing their skulls. The only exception was Skull Claw, who simply eat the sand soldiers whole. As for her species being able to open their mouth extremely wide and Skull Claw being a much bigger size than her species, the Sand Walkers, which were called Skull Wolves by Danzel. Since they had lots of time to talk those past days, Nurse and Ra told what kind of beast Skull Claw was. A beast brought from the outside of the desert and then evolved itself to best suit the desert Danzel thought as he watched Skull Claw destroying and getting hit by the Sand Soldiers. Nurse and Ra explained that their undead-like appearance with their skulls exposed was a forced evolution step point made by his father so that the sand walkers don't get hurt from the sand that might have gone in their eyes and cause an infection or worse of all make the sand walker blind. I'd better move before we lose too many of them. Danzel mumbled as he guided his mana into his body. Kicking the ground, using the skill, swift movements, he moved extremely fast towards the sand soldiers and kept destroying them with ease. Thanks to the swift movements, skill being one with high duration time, Danzel could move at top speed for a large amount of time before he abused his mana. Though some of the wraiths were getting destroyed and flying back into Nursin Ra S Crystal because of the number difference, the rate that Danzel destroyed the sand soldiers was much faster than the undead fell. Though in his opinion it would have been much easier to just rush the magic caster controlling them, that decision would compromise with what he had to do. So annoying, Danzel said as he crushed another sand soldier. Remembering the strategy that Nursen told him, it was quite annoying. Listen, Danzel, that girl is much inferior in magic compared to me. I guess that she would try to beat us with numbers, so all you have to do is... Deplete her mana, huh? Danzel mumbled as he watched at the magic caster's heavy breathing. Since magic casters were only useful when they had the mana to cast their spell, once they are out they were practically helpless. And Sasha, who stared at her sand soldiers getting destroyed, realized what the sword-wielding necromancer was trying to do. Raising her staff, multiple missiles made out of sand flew towards Danzel, who was similarly destroyed by the sand flying like a whip or a tentacle. If this continues one, then everyone. Although she knew what the necromancer was trying to do, she could only follow the man's attention and continuously summon sand soldier after sand soldier to deprive him of all of his undead. As long as my mana lasts until the undead minions are destroyed, then I can overwhelm him with numbers, she thought to herself. But sadly for her, she didn't know that she was fighting against two third tiered undead. What? Sarah yelled in surprise as she watched something that deprived her of all hopes she had on her plan working out. 
With the crystal glowing in a dark golden light, the sands of the destroyed sand soldiers soon reformed into a similar and yet different sand humanoid. Much larger and way more detail in their armor that she would have difficulty creating. The said sand soldiers holden valges and had their faces covered in a hood made out of the sand. The amount of those soldiers was only 15. Although a joke compared to the sand soldiers of Sasha S, their power was much stronger. Joining forces with the undead, the tides of the battle turned against the living. Ha ha ha. Falling into one of her knees, Sasha couldn't he control her breathing while sweat was coming all over her body from the abuse of her mana. The sweat was mostly of the heat of the abuse of mana together with the pain that it bow upon her body. Though they were only about five wraiths and two sand soldiers together with Skull Claw and their respective lieges. Seeing the magic caster's state, Danzel switches his target. Now, dashing towards her, the villagers tried to shoot him, but the arrows simply bounced against his armor that was plated with his mana. Sasha, stand up. We must go away. Marco said as he rushed and looked at Sasha with worry. Ha, huh, Marco, run away. Sasha managed to say as she pointed her staff towards Danzel. The sand ass shifted and started to create a humanoid figure in front of her. The man used of creating that sand soldiers, though, was much greater than the others from before. Sand Arbiter. She said as sand soldiers twice the size of Nursen raw sand soldiers appeared with parts of his armor, and spear being that of metal. Hmm. Looking at the sand soldiers who had tea legs and were essentially rooted in place, Danzel was as surprised by this thing piercing his spear at him with incredible speed and power as he was disappointed by it. You might have been a challenge if you could even create such soldiers. Danzel mumbled as he dodged the second piercing attack of the Sand Arbiter. Moving into his range, Danzel swiftly cut through the Sand Arbiter's hand twice before swinging his sword diagonally to his face. Asterisk so. The huge Sand Arbiter fell to the ground as a mass of sand. And no way, it was a third-tiered one. Sasha said in between her breathings in shock. The Sand Arbiter was indeed a summon of the third tier, but it being in an incomplete state led it to only have the strength of someone who just joined the third tier rank. For Danzel, who was near peak the third tier, the Sand Arbiter didn't he have much of a chance. Making her last line of defense keeping Danzel away from her to crumple into the floor. Dashing forward, Danzel soon reached in front of her. Sasha. The man who was by her side quickly stepped forward and pushed his dagger towards the necromancer. And before Sarah S. sight, she saw how the necromancer cut Marcos's head with a swift swing. From the swing, some amount of blood flowed towards her shocked face as she couldn't he process what was happening. When she did, though, she screamed out of grief. No. Marco. She quickly moved and gripped Marco's falling body into her hands. Seeing no reaction of the body, tears flow and mixed with the blood of Marcos. Grasping her staff in anger, she wanted to imminently use all her remaining mana to kill the one who killed Marco, but upon raising her head, she only saw masses of sands gripping her body and forming a wicked cross like a prison that to her surprise started to suck her remaining mana out of her. I will go finish the rest. The sword-wielding necromancer said something that she didn't he understand what he meant. But she soon did. Before her eyes, the crystal that he was holding the whole time started to float and gather sand to form a humanoid figure. But unlike any other sand soldier, the humanoid figure had actually colors in the sand itself, which made it lifelike. Only using the lifelike word would be wrong as the sand figure had a skull as his face. Do that, I will begin the body possession. Nursen Ra said as his ethereal dark golden glowed much bright for a second. Sarah, who was confused and exhausted, finally understand what he meant. No. Don't he kill them. With her veils as background music, Danzel went around and killed the villagers mercilessly. No. Help. I will do anything. 
Let me live. Ah. Uh. While that was happening, Sasha felt a strong headache coming in her head as a Skeletar sand figure touched her face. Let me bring out your body's true potential. As pain and whispers of the dead started to ring in her head, minutes passed. And though the countless ethereal pain, she felt an ancient being trying to steal her body for itself. Though all that pain, she struggled to keep her sanity. Which of course you lead the pain to forever one continue. Ah, all. Time passed like fleeting sand, similar to how the screams of despair and pain did in the sacred treasury. While the remaining undead fought against the sand soldiers and prevented them to get any closer to Nursin Ra and the girl, Danzel went around and swiftly killed the villagers at a scary pace. Every time the air cutting noise was being made from his sword, the blood of the living would taint either his armor or sword. Few tried to fight against the white in order to save their dear lives. And yet those few were the first to receive their death compared to the ones who hid and pushed others. Though cowardly, it did bring them a few seconds longer to live. Yes, seconds. As Danzel saw others betray each other, the one who pushed the other party would be targeted next by Danzel's blade. The people could only see how death was closing in without being able to do anything. Literally, the arrows that hit his armor bounced off as if they were nothing, while neither blade could reach him before his holder would be mercilessly cut down by Danzel. They realized that they couldn't he escape death, and the only thing they could do was how death was coming closer to claim them alike. Just like staring at an hourglass timer, sooner or later, Every bit of sand will fall. LA test NOVLS on and bell by slash. Co. It s barely enough for a day s worth of work. Danzel said as he whipped the blood from his sword. As the people here didn't t wear any heavy armor or something out of metal to protect their bodies, counting that their bodies themselves were much less durable than the ones of a higher tier, cutting them down was to Danzel similar to how he cut butter. Though not entirely like butter, it did save him the trouble of switching among other weapons. Too bad that those guys were just of the first tier. If it were in tea for the few second tier people, then I would even gain a day's worth of XP, he thought to himself. Ignoring all the XP notifications, he looked around to see how the two remaining wraiths together with Skull Claw managed to defeat all the remaining sand soldiers. Though the wraiths were one thing, from the very beginning, he didn't he worry about losing Skull Claw. One reason was that he was essential too large for the sand soldiers to strike her skull, essential her core to end her servitude. She is pretty damaged, though. I guess the removing of the flesh now is a must, Danzel thought as he looked at the black blood falling from Skull Claw and bits of her own flesh being smashed through the ground, probably stomped by herself. Putting all such thoughts to the side, Danzel looked towards the most interesting ongoing events. The possession. When he turned his head and looked at the sand prison, he frowned mentally. It is still ISN'd T over. Danzel thought as he looked how Nursin was still touching the girl's head, the latter letting small groans of pain. Moving closer to them and waiting a few seconds to see if there is any change, even after waiting for a few minutes, he turned to Nursin. Hey, Nursin, how does it look? You need more time, or? Danzel asked. After a short silence between them, Nursin removed his hand and answered without removing his gaze from the girl. Don't he call me like that? Saying so with a cold tone, he raised and clenched the mouth of Sarah and forced her to look into his ethereal golden eyes. Sarah, whose eyesight was emotionlessly regained her light and stared at Nursin Ra with anger and unwillingness. That wench, her continuous, is much stronger than I had expected that it would be. Or is it rather spirit? No matter what, she ISNT letting me possess her. Nursin said with anger suited for the undead. So you can t do it? Danzel asked. Those words hit Nursin raw, unfound nerve to the point he replied with spite. Of course, I can possess her. 
If I do it, though, I will have to forcefully break her mind, which ISNT ideal as it could damage her brain. Since I will be using that body, I wanted to avoid doing as such. But it seems I will have none another choice if things continue as such. Nurse and Ross said with a cold tone who terrified Sarah. Though her hate of having everyone dying together with the fear of losing her body kept her resisting against the undead in front of her. The physical pain together with the mental one was starting to make her crazy. Please, no more. Kill me already, you monsters. She wanted to scream, but her voice has long been lost with her screams of pain. Aha. Uh -huh. If it us that then I might be able to help. To both their surprise, they looked at the sword-wielding necromancer in surprise and hope. From which party was which was unknown, but Nurse and Ross stared at him with doubt. You? What do you want to do? Wait and see. Danzel said as he moved in front of Sarah, who looked at Danzel as if seeing her next torturer. Please just kill me, she said with tears falling down her head. Looking at her in silence, Danzel stared at Nurse and Ra and whispered something that Sarah wasn't able to hear. Nurse and Ra at first looked at him with suspicion before nodding in confirmation. Seeing that, Danzel raised his blade up high and placed it a few centimeters away from her chest. You will feel it just for a second. Danzel's cold words sounded very sinister, but to Sarah, it was a sign of ending her torture. Pushing his blade forward, she closed her eyes and prepared to feel intense pain in her chest. But all she felt was pain similar to how one would feel after cutting their cut in paper. Opening her eyes to see what was happening, all she saw was the blade slightly cutting her at the sternal notch. Putting his blade away, a few centimeters long cut was to be seen. Ashu! She stared dumbfounded and confused at the necromancer, not sure what to make of this cut. Ignoring her gaze, Danzel stared at Nurse and Ra. Do it. The moment those words escaped Danzel's mouth, Sarah felt an immense pain going through her chest. Her head was shot up and looked dazed from the pain. The feeling of cold metal and the blood that she coughed felt so real that for a moment. She forgot how she was supposed to keep her guard against a certain undead. As the feeling of cold metal and blood tasted in her mouth, her vision darkened as she felt her body going limp. When she thought she finally died, though, a new voice inside her head was there to tell her how reality was cruel. Don't you worry, I will use your body with care. The moment she realized what had just happened, it was too late. With Nursin Ra's sand body falling apart, a dark golden glow escaped the body of the girl as the sand prison exploded and the mana around her increased and raged through the surroundings like a vortex. Danzel, who saw that cash the falling crystal that was Nursin Ra past Bessel and looked at the girl impressed. Such a huge amount of mana. As the vortex of mana rage started to die on, the floating body of the girl fell to the ground. Or rather Nursin Ra's new body fell to the ground. Ha ha ha, I once more have mortal flesh. Nursin Ra said with a much deeper voice than Sarah S., yet still similar enough to realize it was Sarah's voice. Gripping the staff that she used, Nurse and Ra looked at it before shaking his head disappointedly. Sigh, so primitive. Has this era equipped Doug Rest as time went on? I guess I will have to use it till I reach the treasury. Are you done? Danzel said with an ice-cold voice. Turning around to face Danzel, Nurse and Ra nodded his head. Yeah, the possession has now been fully completed. I am the master of this body. Looking at the girls named Sarah S. Body and Nursin being the one speaking made him feel weird. Anyway, why did you choose this body and not the other magic caster ones? Though you said he was bad blood and all, aren't you mentally a male? Wouldn't he a male body suit you best? Standing silent for a moment, Nursin Ra opened his mouth. Indeed, mentally I am a male but I have chosen this body for the very fact of its blood. You see, this girl is a descendant of one of my past people. Though not royalty itself, she is the bare minimum of a body that I require. I see. 
Saying so without much interest, Danzel looked around as if searching for something. So, where is the treasury that you talked about? The path is right in front of you. Walking towards the walls, Nursen Ra reached out and input his dark golden mana into the wall itself. Danzel looked confused as he knew that doing so wouldn't he do much as the place didn't he allow any mana to move at all, almost. But to his surprise, the seeming wall opened up similar to the gate and opened up a path. There was such a thing. Walking slightly ahead of Nurse and Ra, they both went towards the secret path. As they were walking, Nurse and Ra observed how his body felt much different than the one that he once had when he was one of the living. It is so different. Mumbling to himself, Nurse and Ra looked down and touched his left breast. So that as how they felt, he thought to himself as he soon found out slowly found out how the body worked. Walking down the secret path together with Nurse and Ra, they shortly arrived in a fairly large room that had all sorts of magical items, from accessories to weapons. Few were in display. Too few to be exact. Is this the treasury that you bossed all about? If yes, I am severely disappointed, Danzel said while reading the description of the few items. Most of them worked like keeping a spell inside of them that could be recharged similar to his rune of force, but most of them weren't that useful. Some either created clean water by consuming ones or just shifted the sands to create a shape. The most useful of them all was a ring that could keep the sand floating to create a shield similar to how the wraiths had done. They were a nice item, but nothing impressive. Of course not. This is merely the lobby of it. Nurse and Ra said with a scoff before moving towards a wall that had a centimeter big hole. Creating sand out of nothing, Nurse and Ra guided the sand inside the hole and started to shape it in a certain form. Injecting his mana too, a few click sounds started to come out of the wall. Asterisk click click click. After a few seconds of that sound continuing on, in the middle of the room the floor started with a staircase. A secret room inside a secret room? Danzel said with a dry towards Nursen who simply shrugged his shoulder on him, making his ponytail swing around. Taking a step towards the staircase, once he was about to reach the staircase, space seemed to move by contact with his feet. It seemed like a transparent fluid got disrupted by Danzel's movement. Freaking out, Danzel jumped a few meters back while pointing his sword towards the opened-up path from Reflex. Stop overreacting already. It has just a dimension shift and nothing more. Nurse and Ra said as he walked towards the staircase. Once his body seemed to go inside the transparent fluid, something weird happened. Staring him from the other side, Danzel saw how Nurse and Ra seemed as if he was space ahead that he was supposed to be. What the hell? Standing still like a statue, Danzel was glaring at Nursen in confusion. Lowering his sword, he walked towards the staircase and slowly submerged just like Nursen did. Fully inside, he looked behind him only to see a distorted look of the room he was in before. You said something about dimension shift, right? What is wow? Looking towards Nursen Ra, or more precisely what was behind him, he was stunned. A wide area where the light was of a dark blue light that brought the illusion that there was a dark blue mist constantly in the air, following where the staircase was just a long pathway wherein ended in a circular platform. Looking down, though, was what truly shocked him. Countless floating pathways combined with staircases were floating through the air at a constant altitude where large statues were to be seen. Not only was this whole place magical, but the level of detail on the pathways that looked as if they were made out of pure gold was one of a master level. Explore new ovals on Envelby. Con. You don't you know what a dimension shift is? Nurse and Ra said, making Danzel refocus on him that the sight before him. Dimension shift. Rather the term of a pocket dimension would make it easier for you to understand. Anyway... We went through the entrance, space, and time inside here changed to that of the current reality. 
Not only has the space being expanded upon allowing it to be as big as you see, but the flow of time also is much slower inside here than the actual reality. Nurse and Ra said while walking down the stairs with Danzel following closely behind him. Space and time you say. It took Danzel some amount of time to work his mind around those two subjects. So, it is similar to a spatial storage ring? This place, I mean. Danzel said while being lost staring around. What? Of course not. You can't even compare a dimension shift to such an item. In fact, just comparing them is insulting the former. Compared to an item that expanded space and making it freeze with no flow of time where no living things can enter in. A dimensional shift is at a much larger scale where everyone and anything can move. The fact that it's also slow time means that it breaks the laws of the world itself. As Nurse and Ra finish speaking, an awkward silence surfaces with only their steps to echo in this large place, mainly Danzel ones. Who would even build such a thing? Danzel said the only thing that was in his mind. He did somewhat expect the treasury to be quite large with any wonders to see, but never in his immortality would he see that the treasury was in a place where it broke the laws of the world. Danzel didn't wait to get Nursen to answer, and yet he still got one. The one responsible for building this place was my father, Nursen Ra said, bringing in some interesting news for Danzel's non-existent ears to hear. The one responsible for building this place was my father, Nursen Ra said, bringing in some interesting news for Danzel's non-existent ears to hear. You father, you said, built this whole place. Nodding his head in confirmation, she stepped with Danzel on the circular platform at the end of the pathway. My father was an exceptional magic caster, one that could bring natural disasters on wimps and create miracles worthy to be called work of a god. He was a great father, but... Asterisk rough. A sudden shake happened to the circular platform where Danzel and Nursen Ra were standing. Seeing Nursen not freak out imminently, Danzel observed his surroundings, only to find out that the platform that they were standing has begun to go down slowly. Seeing the huge gem in the middle of the platform bright up, Danzel realized that the platform itself was a magic item or rather a magical construct. Do mana crystals come in such sizes? Danzel's thoughts were shortly interrupted by Nursen continuing his speech. But my father in the end was a magic caster just like me and my brother. Making's his mission to discover the secrets of magic. Asterisk rot. As the platform stopped moving, the two walked towards a similar path, where this time had four total huge statues. At least that's what Danzel thought they were before taking a better look at them. Those are... Standing tall at the high of 15 meters, the statues had the mouth of a brown wild while the rest of their head was ripped with bandages around that the only thing that they didn't cover was a closed-up eye. While those parts were that of flesh, the rest of their body was made out of the same magic stone as the whole building was. What made those statues more intimidating than the pure combination of flesh and stone was the fact that every six of them had a large bulge burning with an immense amount of mana. If it weren't for the crystal that was I racked and fused with the weapon, then the weapon would have exploded the instance the crystal was removed. What surprised Danzel was the fact that those statues had the aura of that of an undead similar to himself and Nursen Ra. Before Danzel could the many questions that were going through his head, Nursen Ra continued. And those secrets didn't lay in only a profession of his, but also on the ones that he was less focused on. That includes forbidden magic, such as necromancy. Turning towards the stunned Danzel, Nursen gave him the most lovely smile that he could. Doing that with him possessing Sasha's made him look gorgeous to the opposite sex. Well, most of the human race it is. Seeing the statues starting to move and not look like some random statues anymore, Danzel cursed. Such as the flesh golems that you are seeing right now. Damn it. Tell me that sooner, you useless spirit. Raising his sword in front of him, 
The 15-meter flesh golems turned their head towards the two of them. Gah! Their breathing let the smoke out of their mouth similar to when molten magma meets with a block of ice. Each step they made held the strength to destroy a builder their size with ease. As the dust cover from years of end fell to the ground, the creations of Azara moved to eliminate the intruders. Growl. Gray. Gnashing their teeth and making growls, the flesh golem let loose a constant eerie aura of that of the undead. Woken up from their slumber to fulfill their torture's mission that they were designed after, the flesh golems marched towards Danzel and Nursen Ra with hate and duty, guiding their every action. Growls. Echoes of deafening growls filled the massive sacred treasury as every single flesh golem started to activate on the lowered floating pathways. Though their strength is incredible thanks to their size, that also is their disadvantage as they are as slow as they seem. Nursen Ra said while his staff crystal brightened up with mana. While he prepared his spell though, a massive hand made out of the same material as the flesh golem S touched the corner of the pathway. Having jumped from a lower pathway towards the one where Danzel Yuendi Nurse Nursen Ra was, a flesh golem was hanging with one hand on the pathway. Raising his up to the platform, the newly arrived flesh golem turned his head towards the two without opening its only eye and positioned his other hand holding the massive bulge S towards them. This guy. He can TB. He thought as he turned to Nurse and Ra who didn't he notice the newly arrived flesh golem from behind them. Putting the question of how does undead were capable to see in the first place, Danzel knew when to recognize danger when he sees one. Move. Cursing internally, he swiped his towards Nurse and Ra's stomach with a swift and yet gentle motion, but once his hand made contact with Nurse's belly, he inputted his whole strength and sent Nurse and Ra flying up. Oof. Nurse and Ra growled as he looked at Danzel in confusion and anger. Although it was much better than punching Nurse and Ra into the air, which would probably result in inflicting internal organ damage on his newfound body, Nurse and Ra still felt like he just got gut punched. This bastard. What does he think he is doing, Dash? Nursen wanted to say as saw a massive valge being pushed to where they were from a flesh golem hanging in the edge of the pathway. Realizing that he couldn't he jump away in time, Danzel changed his poster and readied himself for the incoming valge. Asterisk clank. Upon making contact with the valge, Danzel felt as if his blade met with a train going at top speed. Asterisk tcccchhh. Though Danzel didn't he fall or get crushed by the huge bulge, he couldn't he do anything but be pushed away by the sheer difference of strength. Holding his ground, he was pushed back while creating sparks in the ground from his armor legs. And once he reached the edge of the platform, Danzel was pushed to fall out of the platform they were. Danzel. Nurse and Ra yelled as he quickly shifted the sands towards Danzel's side. Gurui. While growling, the flesh golem taking the lead of the other three flesh golems opened its bloodshot eye and looked towards Nurse and Ra. As the eye glowed for a split second, the mana that Nurse and Ra gathered for his spells was disturbed and went out of control, making the spell itself fall apart and the mana flee through the air. What? Nurse and Ra yelled in surprise as the sand that was about to catch Danzel from falling lost his influence and became fleeting sand. Seeing Danzel fall, he cursed the genius that was his father from placing such things as those flesh golems. Seven sit and velb slash n. C slash m for l test bells. Damn it. Father never explained to any of us three brothers what us damn flesh golems were capable of. Back then I thought that they were only some physically strong puppets who were created out of necromancy and father's knowledge, but to think that he would give some mere puppets a skill worthy to be called the bane of all mages of the third tier and below as a magic caster himself. The skill that Nurse Ra was talking about was of disrupt magic, a skill capable to make a magic caster completely useless if used correctly. Just as the spell is called, Disrupt magic, 
sends a wave of mana to disturb the mana in a specific place and time, which, if used correctly, could make a spell S mana bent, making it cancel the spell. As impressive as it sounded though and that it was, it wasn't he an almighty skill to go against every magic caster. It needed to be cast the moment the magic caster finished his casting. For that one is required to observe one enemy and determine when to cast it so that it cancels the enemy's magic caster spells. Simply put, one needed to be extremely precise on the enemy moved, mana, and even casting. Things that Azara knew. In the first place, he designed the flesh golems to embody and master this very skill. And for achieving that, necromancy was needed. Nursen Rao remembered asking his father why he didn't he use the usual golems in the tower and used those flesh golems instead. Though my golems would have been much stronger than those flesh golems, there is a limit in enchanting the strength of a golem which also would require resources that can be used to raise other disciplines in the tower. Son, I know you don't he like the art of necromancy, but out of the other schools of magic, it s one of the strongest types of magic. I hate it when he is right. Nursen Ra mumbled to himself as mana around his body was raised, lifting his robe and ponytail as if a gentle wind passed his side. Never in his life had he found the arts of necromancy necessary compared to his brother. Where he needed soldiers, sand magic could make many reliable minions that some undead, while any other spell could bring the same devastation that as a necromancy one. At least that's what he thought back then. Now, that wasn't the case. Having experienced death once and being raised as an undead, effectively granting him a second shot in life with additional powers at that, he did lose most of his old body's strength and mana, yes. But with the gift of immortality and using the dead to strengthen himself directly, his opinion of necromancy changed. Releasing his dead mana and combining it in one of his spells, Nursen created a new spell called Dead Scythes. Raising the sand around him, he ended multiple sharp blades that contained enough dead mana to detour a normal rock to become dust. The flesh golems, of course, used their eyes to make the few sharp blades crumble and disappear in the air, with only small pieces of dead mana remaining. It was a spell that relied on numbers while not losing on its destructive power. Sadly, the spell being made up just now not only consumed huge amounts of Nursenra's body, but also had a fatal weakness that the flesh golems possessed. Seeing that they weren't capable to stop the flying sands of death, they all pushed their volges forward and activated the enchantment that was in the weapon. With the crystal lighting up, the very same light spread and formed an ethereal shield that by first look didn't look all that impressive. But once the flying sides met the shield, they imminently exploded like water balloons meeting a brick wall. Seeing that Nurse and Ra was lost in words, seeing their every single vulge creating such a shield, not only did Father put brains capable to cast something such as disrupt magic, but also gave those mere puppets each an artifact capable to generate a damn shield used for magic. And he told us that he doesn't want to waste any resource on them. Grumbling internally, he was about to try another spell when by the side of his eye he saw the flesh golem that thrown Danzel away to have finally started up into his own feet, while holding the huge bulge in his hand. Looking left and right, Nurse and Ra was surrounded by the five flesh golems whose eyes opened and stared at him. Damn it, magic doesn't work on those guys, he cursed internally as he conjured a set of armor and transformed his staff into that of an eye bulge that held the same effect as that of a staff that was capable to enchant and move mana more freely. Knowing that magic wouldn't work in the current situation, he enchanted his body to lessen the gap between his and their physical strength. Gah! As the flesh golem behind him swung his valge at him, creating sand through the ground helped Nurse and Ra catapult himself out of the range of the swing. Pointing his valge that served as a staff above the flesh golem, sand shot out with incredible speed to pierce its eye. 
But before the spell could make contact with the target, the other flesh golems interrupted the spell. Nersenra, of course, aimed for that. With the sand is no more controlled by Nersenra, it plainly fell to the ground and, more importantly, toward the certain flesh golem's eyes. Gah! As if screaming out of pain, they opened his eyes wider and started looking towards Nersen with killing intent. Nersen Ra aimed to see if it can get blind, but seeing its condition to be still able to see, Nersen Ra started to tack his mind while dodging and the flesh golem's attacks. G.H. This power, cursing internally, Danzel used his whole strength to stop the Valge, sadly with no success. Leaving sparks and marks in the ground, Danzel found himself being pushed off the platform. Damn it. Watching how the sand controlled by Nursen came towards him, he was about to praise his quick reaction. However, the moment he saw the sand slowing down and falling to the ground, he continued falling down. If you have to do something right, you got to do it yourself in the end. Danzel cursed as he seemed his surroundings. There. Danzel rejoiced as he looked at a platform that was near the previous one. This F asterisk cur must have jumped from there to us, Danzel thought to himself. And he was indeed right with the flesh golem jumping from that platform. The only problem was that the platform had similar flesh golem S walking there. Worse of all, if Danzel continued to fall as he was, he would just miss the platform and fall with the next platform looking to be 100 meters further away. Position himself better mid-flight, Danzel sent out his mana below him and started to form two hands out of dark green mana. As soon as the mana hands were formed, Danzel stepped with his one foot on top of one hand while his free hand held the remaining mana hand to keep himself stable while the one mana hand that he was stepping on was slowing his fall. Commanding his mana hands to rise in the air, Danzel's fall slowed each second more. But unexpectedly, he felt some sort of force making keeping his mana hands active. What is going on? Danzel mumbled as he concentrated on keeping the hands active. Usually, hand of mana affinity required a very low concentration from himself, essentially making them as some second limps, but Danzel now found himself each passing second that keeping mana hands was starting to require his whole focus. Without knowing why such a thing was happening, Danzel imminently went to abandon the ship that was his mana hands similar to a sailor who spotted dozen of holes under it. Realizing his focus on the mana hand he was holding, he strengthened the one below him while he guided his own mana into his legs. Using a skill he hadn't used for a while, Danzel used Leap to jump off the fading mana hand towards the platform. Asterisk Tuck Reaching the platform, Danzel rolled to the ground. But before he could relax, he sensed an imminent danger falling upon him. Literally, trusting his instincts, he jumped to the side shortly after a massive foot made out of stone stomped the position he was previously at. Jumping back, Danzel recovered his poster while studying the enemy in front of him. So, it s one of those guys. Danzel said with a cold tone, watching how they walked and movements were relatively slow in the scope of a third tier combated, Danzel knew not to underestimate them. Confronting them with my strength would be mere suicide even for me, who is to live, he thought as he already planned how to deal with them. The flesh golem who saw the intruder be still alive growled with his god mouth and raised the massive valge to swing it at Danzel. Sweeping it so that it takes the whole pathway sideways, the air-cutting sound coming from the Valge came closer to cleave Danzel in two. Having long realized the flesh golem S invited to sweep him like a fly off the platform, he wasn't he stupid enough to stand and receive it. Just about the Valge was to cleave him too. Danzel using both leap and swift movements jumped over the Valge. Pacing his feet to the floor, Danzel kicked the ground and dashed towards the hands of the flesh golem. Noticing that the intruder dodged his well-calculated attack, it wanted to stop and try once more to flatten him. Alas, Danzel wasn't he going to let that of happening. Slow. 
Raising his sword up high, he swung at the stone hands holding the vowel a total of three times in a short amount of time. Asterisk brof. The hands of the flesh golem soon crumbled and fell to the ground. If one were to look closer at the stones that fell of the flesh golem, one could see signs of blood. Danzel though didn't T pay much of any need of that and put his sole focus on eliminating the undead hybrid in front of him. The flesh golem that considered his hands useless now raised his foot and went to stomp at Danzel. Their size is as much as their own weakness, Danzel thought to himself as he jumped back away from the flesh golem as stomp. Thanks to their size, not only made the other flesh golem s unable to help each other without risking friendly fire but also made their movements slow. And at that, Danzel was right. The fact that their size and material that they were built with made them both heavy and had more resistance with the air, making them slower. That was a fact. Swinging his sword towards the ankle area of the flesh golem, cutting a large part of it, the flesh golem fell to one of its knees and supported itself with the vowelge like a stick. The flesh golem swung its arm back to where Danzel was to throw him off the platform but was way too slow. Being forced to jump back a few steps, Danzel dashed and cut the other ankle of the flesh golems, making it fall to both his knee and bending his back. And as Danzel predicted, the flesh golems without their legs were a sitting duck in front of him, waiting to be finished off. Jumping and running on top of its back, he went for the kill. Recognizing the intruder running on his back, the flesh golem had twisted slowly with blood coming out of its throat until it did almost a 180-degree turn. When it finished, Danzel was in front of its snout. Yeah. Opening its mouth to swallow the intruder whole to fulfill his duty and undying hunger. So the mouth is from a skull wolf, huh? Danzel mumbled as he swung his sword to the side of the flesh golem's mouth and moved past its ferocious bite. Holding his sword with both hands, being now behind its head, he swung mercilessly and left a massive cut that was as deep as half of the flesh golem's head. Yeah. Screaming in pain, the flesh golem wanted to move his hands to hit the intruder, unbeknownst to it that it no longer had control over his body. Asterisk bow. Jumping off before the fall of the flesh golem motionless state, Danzel stared at the notification in front of him in satisfaction. You received 100,000 XP. For how annoying and time-consuming they are to kill, they give quite the amount. Danzel said as he made the notification vanish. Hearing the howls of the lower floors and the other flesh golems walking towards his, his grip on the sword tightened. I might actually gather enough, he though as he gathers the mana from his body towards his sword. But similar to when he used the mana arms, he felt some kind of force disturbing the mana in his sword. Shortly after, the gathered mana breaks away from Danzel's influence and mixes with the air, making Danzel waste his mana. Read latest chders at n slash v e l e i co slash m. Something is wrong with this place, or maybe. Gazing at the flesh golems making their way towards him, he walked towards them with each passing second becoming faster. They are responsible for it. One of the flesh golems swung his valge down toward S. Danzel only to be dodged by the latter. Before he had the chance of realizing just like he did with the other flesh golem, the one that swung at him moved his leg away and left enough place for another flesh golem to send a kick, taking him by surprise. Those things dash. Pushing his sword forward and putting mana platings in his armor, he felt the full force of the kick coming like an incoming train which sent him flying and rolling through the pathway. He felt some of his ribs cracking, and yet Danzel raised up once more and glanced at the now-destroyed sword that Nursen created for him with annoyances. Shit. Cursing under his helmet, he threw the handle of the sword to the ground, he pulled a spear out of his storage ring while gazing towards the slowly moving flesh golems, when in fact was staring in the status window of the flesh golem that kicked him. So that explains it. Danzel said in understanding. 
Not only did that undead have some nasty talents such as tortured one, abomination, and so on, but some of them multiplied his already high strength of 545 by 1.2 by the cost of his agility multiplier being 0, 8, making them extremely slow and slow. What interested him the most were one skill called Disturb Magic, which seemed like the cause of the disturbance that he felt a moment ago. That s bad. Danzel, though, as he felt the focus on his mana plating to be disturbed and forcefully cancel the effect of his skill. For him, such a skill, although annoying, it wasn't he that he couldn't he fight because of it. Since swift movements and leap were ones that happened inside his body, they weren't he able to be disturbed, it didn't he affect him much. But he knew full well that this wouldn't he be the same for Nurse and Ra. Skilled as he might be, he is screwed against those things, Danzel though. Looking at the platform where he fell and then back at the flesh golems, he tightened his grip on the sphere and walked towards them. Though I could take my time to finish those giants, I doubt that Nursen could still be in one piece. And for my goal, I would need his help, Danzel thought to himself. The treasury did interest him quite a bit, but to his ethereal eyes had a secondary of importance. Something like a side quest. Although it would be nice to get a new weapon and armor of better quality, it wasn't he necessary. First of all, he came and make his home the tower to farm the remaining XP for his remaining five missing levels that hopefully would unlock the evolution process. I plan to earn them slowly by minding my business alone in the tower, but I guess that S no longer an option. Having some giant's bags of XP in front of him that were basically worth 20 hours each. Danzel, of course, didn't he want to miss any of them. The only problem he currently found was the lack of weapons that he had for destroying those giant undead hybrids. I should even collect the other weapons from the fallen before following Nursen. Danzel mumbled annoyed as he guided the mana in his body. Using swift movements to accelerate towards the flesh golems, the moment he saw them raise their valge up, High Danzel switched his grip on the spear and took a throwing pose. Take that. Using his whole strength, he threw the spear towards the eye of the nearest flesh golem. Asterisk so. Although he wasn't he very much used to throwing his spear like a javelin, he still had the knowledge of the Intermediate weapon mastery, which by now turned into his current swordsmanship, death guarding swordsmanship. Essential giving the necessary knowledge of how to throw a spear and use all other weapons decently. Alas, practice makes perfect. And Danzel had none of it, making the spear fly towards the neck instead of the eye. But that didn't he pain Danzel much as his throw achieved what it was supposed to do. Distracting the giant flesh golem. The flesh golem in question felt threatened by the spear and raised its hand to catch the spear. Asterisk broth. With the spear penetrating the palm of the flesh golem S midway, some cracks appeared, but that was it. The flesh golem but its hand away and looked at where the indurated was supposed to be with a growl, but to its surprise, he found nothing there. That was because he already reached near its feet. The other flesh golem, though, didn't he miss Danzel nearing the fellow tortured one. Before it wanted to sweep its giant bulge and send the intruder flying off the pathway or cut him in half and be done with it, but now it changed its mind. Moving a step back, it pushed the spear bulge blunt end between its fellow tortured one and where the intruder was in order to crush him. That makes things us easier. Danzel mumbled as he used the skill leap, to jump up high to dodge the incoming valge. Asterisk bruff. A loud sound of the blunt end of the valge meeting with the floor of the pathway was made, but the floor didn't he show any signs of damage, which impressed Danzel, who now was standing in the valge shaft. The moment the flesh golem saw the intruder standing in his weapon, it dragged it back with one hand while the other palm was pushed towards Danzel to slap him as one would do with an annoying fly. Gathering his mana once more, he used leap, once more while ignoring the heat that came from the abuse of mana and moved away from the danger of being slapped away. 
Jumping towards the back of the still-confused flesh golem, he brought another spear out of his storage ring and pierced it to its back to use it as a footing for himself. Realizing that something hit its back, the flesh golem reached out to touch the spot and pull out something that was stuck in its body. Bring it forward and looking at what it was, the flesh golem growled in confusion at the sight of the spear. F0 low new haptors at NOV slash E L slash bin slash Gon growl. All that without realizing that Danzel was midair in where its neck was. Bringing out an axe that he had from the storage ring, he swung at the flesh golem's neck and cut a large portion of it, effectively cutting the area where the brain sends out commands towards the rest of its stone body. Gua! Just like before, a loud scream sounded like a mix of a dog and a human being in extrusion pain. Even when Danzel received the notification that he had killed the flesh golem, it didn't he stop howling while the remaining stone body started to fall. I got to hurry before it falls. Danzel, though, as he moved swiftly towards the top of the flesh golem head while ignoring the pain that it was suffering. Time was in essence, and he couldn't he care less of his enemy's pain. Looking at the platform he fell from, Danzel gathered his mana in his legs. You will have to wait for later. Danzel said towards the remaining flesh golem before jumping as high as he could towards the platform. Though he had the axe as a slashing weapon, because of the weapon's nature it was more suited for powerful hits that making large cuts with swords. Observing the status of the flesh golem, he did notice that the damage expert their head was extremely minimally in where their head was the sweet spot in damaging them. Similar to how his body worked and yet different. In his case, he could only be fully destroyed or de if his skull, which was holding his consciousness, was destroyed, but destroying other parts of his body would make him feel weaker from the lost dead mana in his body. For the flesh golem, as far as he noticed, the head was where the whole undead and its consciousness lay, and the body itself was a tool that didn't affect the main body, which is the head. Getting off point, Danzel needed weapons that he could use to effectively destroy their head. He had the axe now, but he didn't fancy him much. So reaching to Nursen, who could make weapons and guide him to the treasury, was a must. But even after using the flesh giant to get a higher footing, using leap to jump higher and swift movements to make himself lighter, Danzel was only a meter away from reaching the platform he fell off even after reaching his hand out. One had to say that below him was nothing else, but a fall to the meter is the end. Before he was pushed with the valge, making him reach the platform he was before, but now that wasn't the case. If he fell, he will probably die. That though didn't his mind though. Maybe it was because he somewhat expected it or that because of his talent undying, he felt much less fear of death. That didn't mean that he was going to let himself fall off through hundreds of meters. Using his mind, he cast two mana arms in front of him, the one holding the platform while the other one holding the end of the other hand, essentially making a chain of arms long enough for Danzel to reach. Letting the axe fall, he gripped the hada swiftly and dragged himself high enough to let its other arm grab the platform before he started to feel the disturbance of mana. Glaring below him, Danzel felt annoyed at the remaining flesh golem starting at him with its bloodshot eye. Peeking bastard, just wait until I finish my department on those here. Danzel cursed as he dragged himself on the platform. Looking ahead of him, he saw Nursen Tobe now dressed up in armor and wielding a spear. Nursen used to create sand under his fret to jump around in the air to escape the grasp and Valjas looking to cut high newly accrued body. Daniel just seeing that was impressive because not only was Nursen physically strong but was also using magic in such an effective way if one were to consider the circumstances of the flesh golem disturbing the spells of him. Looking from far away, he looked fine and slowly but surely damaged the flesh of Golem's stone body, even if only a little bit. But Danzel knew that wasn't the case. Though he had some absurd amounts of mana, there was a limit. That's probably also the case on his body. 
Daniel thought as he looked at the nursin. Though his true body was of the never-tiring undead, his current body was of a living girl who probably didn't have much stamina or endurance in her stats. I guess I should start moving. With his swift movements still being activated in his body, he grabbed the last axe that had and rushed towards one of the flesh golems. Nurse Ra, who was observing the whole field, quickly took notice of Danzel and was surprised to see him up here when he actually fell from the platform. Seeing him running at the flesh golems, though, he wanted to shout out how strong they were. But before he could say something, Danzel swept his axe on the ankle of the flesh golem, completely destroying it and making the flesh golem fall to one of his knees. Seeing this inflict such strength, Nursen sucked the words that he want to say back to his throat. He is indeed strong. He thought as he dodged much easier with a flesh golem out of his way. Turning to see what destroyed a part of its body, the flesh golem I locked towards a small figure with dark cracked armor and helmet, wielding an axe in one hand. Gwaf! Growling and sending saliva out of its mouth, it swung its hand to slap the small figure. Asterisk fush. Dragging the air with it, the flesh golem S palm came like a raging wave to sweep Danzel away. Sneering at the flesh golem S attempt, Danzel, instead of running away like he did the whole time, decided to stand his ground and raise his axe. You are just a pile of old stones, Danzel said as he swung his axe, packing all of his strength towards the palm of the flesh golem. Asterisk bow. The flesh golem, who expected to get rid of the intruder, looked now his hand that was now fully destroyed in confusion. Though their minds were already broken centuries ago, because of Azar Ra's necromancy, he made it so that those tortured ones would forcibly keep their brain to work towards the given role at maximum efficiency. It was cruel, but because of that the flesh golem quickly understand what happened. Looking at the small figure that was the intruder, he growled and notified the other flesh golems to put Danzel at the same level of danger that Nurse and Ra, if not a level higher because he was capable of damaging them. Useless. Danzel cursed under his helmet as he stared at the crumbling of his axe. I didn't even swing it all that much too. Danzel, though, as he just realized the other flesh golems turning towards him except for one focusing on Nurse and Ra. Heh, it seems I am quite popular. He said as he channeled the mana in his body to use swift movements. Not even I am stupid enough to fight against five of those things. Gwaf. Gwaf. Gwag. The flesh golem s raised up their valjas and swung them down like a thunderclap on the location of Danzel. Asterisk Chowo. The pathway floor lightened up in faint golden light and like a rimple traveled the whole pathway before disappearing. With the strength that the flesh golem s had, even the magic cast in the pathway that kept it from being damaged and floating in a fixed location was put through strain. Alas, the enchantment held and stabilized the next second. Danzel, who jumped back and avoided that, pulled one of the few remaining spears from his storage ring and took a throwing pose. Before the flesh golems could raise their valge s once more, Danzel threw the spear with all of his strength. Please hit. Asterisk show. One of the flesh golem s who saw the spear coming near him raised its hand up high and protected his head, mainly the eye of his from the incoming spear. But once it did, the flesh golem noticed the spear flying past his head, completely missing him. Gwaha. It growled in a way that resembled laughter. Danzel who noticed that said in a cold voice, I wasn't he aiming for you. Though he didn't he know if those things could understand what he was saying, even if they did it was already too late. The spear that flew as fast as a ballista's boat was heading towards the one flesh golem that had its back turned to face Nurse and Ra. Without seeing it coming, by some miracle the spear that Danzel threw hit the flesh golem head with such force that pushed the whole head of the flesh golem down by the sear impact. That alone though didn't he make the flesh golem die. Danzel was fine with that, 
He didn't even plan to kill the flesh golem in the first place. As if they had planned this days ago, Nurse and Ra didn't waste a single second of the distracted flesh golem that kept him from using his powerful spells. Impaling Sans Dash. Impaling Sans Dash. Impaling Sans Dash. Casting his spell, three overlapping voices of Nurse and Ra could be heard that brought to however, who heard it shiver though their back. At least that would have been the case if Nurse and Ra didn't, T, have the voice of girls. Unbound by anything, Nurse and Ra created sand using his mana to use as material. The sand shot out and started to form into thick sword lances that had many small spikes and a second later turned the formed sand into sharp metal. In a matter of seconds, Nurse and Ra created over 30 of those large sword lances. With its eyes glowing in a dark golden light, Nurse and Ra pointed towards the flesh golem's location. Desert S. Dread. Desert S. Dread. Desert S. Dread. With three overlapping voices, the sword lances accelerated like rockets and flew towards the flesh golems. Gripping the spear stuck in his head and pulling it out, the flesh golem raised its head the exact moment where tens of sword lances came towards him. Gwaff. Piercing its chest, destroying two of his joints, and opening a hole in the half of his head, the flesh golem screamed in agony as it started to fall. Gwaff. Gwaff. The one who had its ankle destroyed and was forced to look forward sent out a signal to the others and raised with his remaining good hand the Valge and created a barrier thanks to the enchantments of the Valge. The barrier was strong enough to hold even against a spell from a fourth-tiered magic caster and was large enough to cover the whole front of a flesh golem, making it protect itself from the few sword lances and let the other remaining ones fly towards his fellow tortured ones. Unfortunately for them, though, except for one who managed to turn early and activate his barrier— the others found themselves halfway through their turn to be impaled by multiple of those sword spears and leaving huge holes in their body, including their head. While the cries of the fellow tortured ones sounded through the sacred treasury, the two remaining flesh golems didn't he waste any time to stare at Nurse and Ra with hate and activate their mana disturbance skill on him. TCH, to remain. Nurse and Ra clicked his tongue as he was starting to think of ways to destroy the remaining two. But before he could, he heard Danzel calling him. Nurse and Ra. Sword. Danzel yelled as he kicked the ground and passed the standing flesh golem. Discover NW Chapter S N N Zero E L by Gong. Seeing where he was heading and its request, Nurse and Ra managed to control the sand from the ground that came from his previous spells to lanch towards Danzel's arm and form a sword out of metal. Though it was difficult for him to turn the sand into metal, shifting the sands by his will was nothing difficult for him. Gripping the sword, Danzel imminently guided his mana into the blade. That was only possible because the flesh golems had their focus on Nurse and Ra and disturbing his mana. Fall, Danzel said with a sinister tone as he became so fast that he disappeared from his spot for a split second and appeared in front of the kneeling leg of the flesh golem he previously damaged. Letting his sword scream out loud and declare what was to come, the air itself screamed from an air-cutting noise. Asterisk Sheen. With the help of the flying mana blade and his own strength, he cleanly cut the whole leg of the kneeling flesh golem in half and appeared in front of it. The flesh golem who relied on its leg happened to suddenly fell forward by the sudden loss of one of his limbs. Falling face forward, it saw the small black armored figure in front of his fall. Raising its mouth to swallow him whole, Danzel used high jump and cut through half of the flesh golem's bandaged head leaving it to fall followed by a massive flow of blood and screams of the wolf mouth part. You received 100,000 XP. Standing on the still screaming course, Danzel couldn't t avoid the dark blood from the flesh golem tarnishing his armor. But Danzel didn't t pay much of any need for his armor. 
Turning his head towards the remaining flesh golem, he guided his mana into the blade he held. Not a second later, the flesh golem looked at Danzel and activated his mana disturbance skill on him, making the mana that was being guided in his sword go of waste. Are you sure that you want to look towards me? Danzel said with a cold yet sinister tone. Using that time, Nursen Ra using the sand to walk through the air, went behind the flesh golem and raised up his mana to cast a spell at any given time. Realizing what was going on, the flesh golem pointed its vowel towards Nursen Ra, activating the barrier while still looking at Danzel and continuing disturbing his mana. The flesh golem that both of that intruder who killed his fellow tortured ones held an equal amount of danger. It considers the black armored one to have less firepower, but being both strong and fast enough to endanger him to damage, while the female intruder was much easier to handle, but if let alone had a destructive power that wiped almost every one of the fellow tortured ones. In its mind, as long as it kept itself with the barrier safe from the female's spell and fight the black armored intruder with its strength, the chance of winning was at its highest. It was the only logical decision to follow against a swordsman and a magic caster of equal power. Danzel Yuendi Nursen Rado scoffed at the display that the flesh golem showed, though. Let us see how long you last. Two cold voices said in unison. At the same time where Danzel and Nursen Ra went ahead to fight the flesh golem, a particular duo arrived in the rundown village that had neither a name nor a good reputation. One of the duos wore some long-sleeved clothing that to the other who saw the two-meter-tall figure almost got a heat stroke by imagining how the man wearing a weird hat and a silver mask covering his mouth would feel with such clothing. But what got their attention first was the big sheath that the man carried. Is this guy an idiot? Can't he even pull out his blade with its length? Such things were being whispered about the outsider among the ones in the village. With the man taking the spotlight, though, they failed to miss the guy as partner being a small girl wearing a white robe, which also hid her face and her skin from all others' sight. Seeing her height and how she was walking with full confidence, it would be pretty obvious that she was a kid. As their clothing was so unique and the fact that they were outsiders brought lots of attention to them, even unwanted ones. Grandpa, why is everyone looking at us? The small asked, her previous confidences going away as lots of strangers were looking at her. Noticing her distress, the elderly with the weird hat and silver mask didn't he even have to scan his surroundings in recognizing the gaze of those guys. Here too, the elderly called Agar's frown. Let us go, Shiro. I heard that there is a good restaurant in the other part of this place. I bet you are hungry, right? Grandpa will be taking you there. Really? Yay! The small girl yelled with a glim of happiness on her face, not even showing a shadow of a doubt that her almighty and goodwill grandpa would ever lie to her. With those two coming for the first time in this place, it didn't he take a genius to see the elderly lie. Gripping softly her hand, Agar's together with Shiro turned into another street to avoid the gazes, but to his surprise, the ones that showed the most hostility in their eyes started to follow the duo. Seeing that, his eyes turned cold. Taking another route towards an alley with two walls of buildings to the left and right side. But before long, Agars halted his steps. Reveal yourself, us. His voice came out like a whisper that was spoken next through your ear, making the people hiding come out and block both sides of the road. He he look at him, guys. Another big fish swept up right into us. One man carrying a bastard's sword in his shoulder said to the others behind him. By the seer aura that he was releasing, Agars, who could see one's aura, was able to determine the man in the middle as their leader, as he was the strongest among them. What else he could observe was the equipment that they were carrying was way above someone of their strength. Who send you here? Agars said with a stone-cold voice towards them. The answer that he got through felt, stupid. Send us here? Ah, you believing that you are a big shot or anything? Let me tell you, 
The owner of those guys were similar bricks like you believing to be something special. Guy S like you came right into our palms with that crazy magic caster S latest recruitment post. Seriously, whoever that death call or whatever his name has excited the explorers. The man with the bastard said arrogantly as he raised his bastard S high to reveal its worth. Since such guys aren't he going to pass the recruitment anyway, we might as well harvest the loose ends. Don T. A. agree. He said with a sinister smile on his face. As the kept bloodlust was continuously increasing by the second, Agars felt his sleeves be dragged lightly. Grandpa. Shiro said with a cute yet worried voice. Seeing his granddaughter, all the bloodlust was replaced with a radiant smile of a loving grandpa. Don't you worry, Shiro. Grandpa would take care of those bad guys. Agar said while rubbing her head, carefully not to put away her hood. Hee <laughs> hee, Shiro giggled from the gentle and caring touch of her grandpa. Now Shiro, close your eyes for grandpa, please. The next time you open them, we will be in front of the restaurant I told you about. MHHM. Nodding her head, Shiro covers her eyes with two small pale white hands. Good. Agars nodded as he grimaced the moment he stared away from her granddaughter towards the ones responsible for their current situation. Reaching out his hilt, the man with the face of the man holding a bastard sword got serious. Ah, you want to fight us? We might have spared you and the girl if you have just given us your item, but dash discover NW chapped RS and N0 EL by Con. Silence. Agars commanded quietly, but his voice oozed out so much pressure and killing intent that the face of the people around them quickly started to turn to one of shock. You dash. Before being able to finish what the man with the bastard sword was about to say, Agars draw his curved sword out. Asterisk SHHHHH. It was as everything was playing in slow motion in the view of the thieves. And yet in just a split instant, they lost track of the old man's sword. That us when they noticed that they couldn't feel any parts of their body at all. Even their vision seemed to turn if not being split. Huh. Agar's sword was so fast that for a split second it broke the sound barrier and cut multiple times all around him, leaving only the air being cut and leaving the space where it was swung with a void that was later filled with the nearby air. Even the strongest of them who had his gaze towards Agar's was only capable to see multiple white clones cutting his subordinates at such speed that even he wasn't he spared being cut into multiple pieces. Only the sound of the falling body parts could be heard in the small alley, putting his curved sword back into his sheath. Mere fools, Agar scoffed internally as hugged Shiro and made her face his chest. Although he showed things that he shooed and tea at Shiro at such a young age, he still tried his best to spare her of such gruesome sight that was the result of his action. Let us go, Shiro. Agar said as disappeared from his location. The last thought that he had was of something that the leader of those thieves said. It seems I finally find your traits. After a few hours, in the sacred treasury, Danzel was channeling his mana into his palm. Now all you have to do is use your mana like how I explained you to activate the enchantment. Nurse and Ra said from the side with his hands crossed. Aha. Uh -huh. I, I think I got it now. Danzel said. In putting his mana into the circular floor, the gem in the floor lighten up, and the circular floor that they both were standing at started to shake before slowly descending lower. Seeing it work, Danzel stood up and nodded in himself as he looked at the cracked sword beside him. Hey, Nursen, can you make me another one? Looking at the cracked sword, Nursen Ra raised his hand to control and create sand around the sword. Not much later, the sand went around his sword and repaired it to its peak performance that was a few hours ago. The sole survivor of the flesh golem s that first appeared, although it fought by its best of abilities. It ended in a devastating defeat from his side as he and Nursen Ra practically broke and cut him into pieces with a little effort. With Nursen Ra supporting him from the side, practically creating a distraction, 
and him himself being a bit of a nuisance who needed constant attention because of his firepower, Danzel found it easy to finish a soul flesh golem in this situation. After finishing that soul golem, they had easily a few more dozen to finish off in the lower platform that was practically built like a maze thanks to the nature of the circular platform, Elevator. Of course, both his and Nurse and Ra decided to be clever this time around from finishing those hybrids between a golem and an undead. Instead of going into close combat, instead went around into finishing the flesh golem using a range instead of close quarter combat from the higher pathways. At, he had to say that it worked like a charm. With the platform blocking the disturbing magic, Nursin Ra was capable to finish them slowly but surely. Well, almost finish them off as Danzel told Nursin Ra to leave them half alive. Nurse and Ra didn't tea like much that suggestion as it would waste more of their time. He did agree in the end as time was on their side. It wasn't tea like there was some sort of timer for them to rush. And with Nurse and Ra having a body, his true body stopped breaking apart. The reason why Danzel wanted to leave them half alive was obvious. I got enough Danzel thought internally as he watched his XP having already reached the required amount to get to LV.100. That was only possible because he was the one who killed almost every flesh golem till its last floor that they were descending at. On his way here, he also learned how to operate the circular platforms and make them float either back or down, effectively connecting them into a pathway. He simply had to ask for Nurse and Ra to explain to him how it works and after a few. Tens of tries, he got the hang of it. As for the reason why he learned how to use them, he had his reasons. Before long, the circular platform came into a sudden halt, but this time not in a platform. Welcome, but on the bottom of the floor itself. To the treasury's vault, Nurse and Ra said. Status. Name, Rue Danzel. Level, 95. Race, White. Class, Blackguard LV1. Subclass, Rinsmith of Undeath LV.30. Health, 21010-21010. Mana, dua nam lima nol tiga tiga nol nol. Attribute points, zero. Attributes, strength, 425 agility, 500 intelligence, 300 endurance, 381. Talents, superior undead, sin of wrath, reinforced soul, superior unique concionis, rune vision, dead rune knowledge, undead carver, dead mana affinity, dead mana resilience, undying, lower class death magic, mastery of himself, affinity carving mastery, skills, death guarding swordmanship LV.1, stone wall LV.1, high jump LV.1, presentless steps LV.1, undeath corruption LV.1, Swift Movements LV1, Shield Charge LV.1, Gale Mana Blade LV.3, Greater Sense Danger LV.1, Curse of Exhaustion LV.1, Mortal Reminder LV1, Hand of Mana Affinity LV.9, Vanguard's Defense LV.5, Armor Mana Plating LV.1, Cursed Blade LV.1, Death Influence LV.1, Coding Miasma LV.1, Curse of Scourge LV.1, Raise Undead LV.8, Undead Reconstruction LV.1 Sense of the Damned LV.1. Remark, a young white who almost reaches his peak of power, worthy to be called a freak among his fellow undead. It has little experience with death magic, but still good enough for others to recognize you as a white. But because of your past, being mistaken as a lesser lich ISN T impossible. New esterize at n slash bell slash b slash i slash end. Co. XP 14,600,725. Welcome to the Treasury's Vault. Nurse and Ra said with a prideful tone, making Danzel focus on the front of him and not his status. Now ISN T the time. Danzel thought bitterly as he made the floating window in front of him disappear. 
Though he had the XP to get the last five levels to reach 100 and have even some despair, he wasn't he dumped enough to use them now with the presence of Nurse and Ra. Although they fought together and even spend some time learning about each other's personalities, Danzel couldn't he bring himself to trust Nurse and Ra completely. So if he really were to trigger his evolution by reaching level 100, then if Nurse and Ra were to backstab him or something that sort, he would be screwed. He didn't he know what would happen if he were to be attacked mid the evolution process and he wasn't he either willing to know. For now, he decided on the wait and see approach, as he himself was interested in the promised items inside the vault. Hmm, so on the other side should the treasures be, right? Danzel asked as he stared in front of him. The vault in question was a huge gold circular half, where that had a high of over 20 meters. The vault had three main blue mana crystals with many smaller ones supporting the enchantments that were in it. The golden-like metal used for it made the vault look extremely extraordinary. Though it was a beautiful piece of craftsmanship, Danzel asked the important question, Can you open it? Upon hearing that, Nurse and Ross scoffed and made his way towards the vault. I can already imagine what you are thinking, but don't you worry, Dash. Raising the staff spear up high, the mana crystal glowed and spread his mana around the gathered sand that was nearby. Like a building up storm of sand above him, Nursen Ra guided the storm towards the vault. I will keep my word. The sand traveled through the air and slammed directly to the vault. At least that's how it seemed at first. Upon taking a closer look, the sand was slowly going inside some tiny holes that could be easily overseen by one's plain sight. When every piece of sand has gone inside the vault, a glow showed inside the three main mana crystals. Twisting his staff spear, Nursen Ra started to control the sand inside the vault with his mana in a particular way that make the glow of the mana crystal soon turn in the shape of some writings. Danzel, who saw those writings, would have frowned if he had a face. Those letters, they look similar to runes, but not quite right. As Danzel had quite some experience in handling runes, he could recognize a rune when he saw one. And what he was seeing right of now was definitely not a rune. Done. Saying that the rune-like letters glowed the brightest, making it activate all the smaller crystals. A massive ray of light came out of the vault itself by the mere activation of the vault enchantment, indicating that the vault was opening. Asterisk GRRHH. Taking a big breath, Nursen Ra raised his shoulders and his chest up as he were an emperor who came back to his palace. Follow me, Nursen Ra said towards Danzel. Top, top, top. With only Nursen Ra's staff spear hitting the ground and Danzel's steps to be echoing around, the two stepped inside the treasury. Wasn't he you father that this build this place? Danzel asked as he watched his surroundings in amazement. Yeah, why are you asking? Nurse and Ra said. It s the same. Danzel thought to himself as he stared at the treasury that held a sky clear resemblances with the tower's library floor, but much grander than the one that he saw before. Not only were there many books to see, but on top of the bookshelves were laying different kinds of items, being resources such as mana crystals of higher quality or artifacts. They were there. The top part was where the magical items lay waiting such as necklaces, rings, swords, and armors while the top was filled with books that were protected with what he saw as a barrier. Seeing all that, Danzel couldn't he help but say, didn't he he go overboard with all this? Though he had no idea how barriers and other kinds of enchantments were being made, he knew something, and that was that enchantments were expensive to make be it the mana crystal themselves or the natural resources that were needed for the enchantment. It was naturally expensive. As of how he knows that? Well, that was the excuse that Hansen used to him wherever he asked for a high-quality enchantment sword or armor. His current armor did have an enchantment that made it tougher and more durable, but the enchantment was from a lower grade. 
Although he found it really cheap for Hansen to give him the bare minimum of armor with enchantments back then, now he was sure glad that he had at least one. Without the enchantments and the runes on them, it would have long ago been broken from all the sure asterisk T he had to go through. Nursen Ra hearing that simple shrugged his shoulders and pointed in a certain direction. Though this place was called a treasury, the true identity of this place is that it was the workplace of my father. That similar vault over there leads to my father's laboratory while where we are is simple his storage area. Touching the other closed vault door with his hand, Nursen Ra said with a bitter voice, and a magic caster's storage of the level-offed father is comparable to that of hundreds of treasures. Hearing the flesh golems there made much more sense than before. The flesh golems weren't there to pose a challenge on the said intruder, as he and Nursen Ra alone managed to clear every single of them by using their range. But they were there to help the master of this treasury fight off other magic casters. The more he thought of it, it more it made sense. Since a warrior focusing more on physical strength than of magical knowledge wouldn't be a threat to the treasury because he wouldn't able to break through the vault in the first place. Only a magic caster could open the vault, and that's only if they knew how exactly. Seeing the magic casters were the only treat, a bunch of flesh golems disturbing and having a shield against magic was the killer combination for magic casters. And that's alone with the flesh golems. If the master of this place were to join in the fight without having to deal with the flesh golems, the one with an advantage was clear to see. Now as promised, I will allow you to take some of the artifacts from these places. Nursen Ra said as he guided the sands towards the area where the swords lay. As if they were working like some second limps of Nursen Ra, the sand picked up a long sword of the pile of weapons together with an armor set. Here, taking a last look at them, Nursen Ra places those in front of Danzel. Don't mind me. Danzel said as he touched every piece of equipment and revealed their status descriptions of every single one. Long Sword of the Sand Emperor's Blade, a blade crafted by the Emperor of the Sands as a gift towards one of his beloved sons, Kanuzara. The enchantments make the mana to be spread much faster and with less effort, even I promise the effectiveness of the mana itself, making it enchant everyone attack using mana. Additionally, I one's will, they are capable to control the sands around him by their sheer willpower. Sadly, the blade would never lay in the hands that they were intended to go. Armor of the Sand Emperor's Blade, a armor crafted by the Emperor of the Sands as a gift of his beloved son, is capable to create sand and turn them into the metal to plate one's armor. Additionally, both toughness and durability have been vastly increased. Sadly, the armor will never be able to be won't and protect the one that was intended to. Starting at them in silence and amazement, Nursen Ra had a smirk on his face. Now as I kept my part of our deal, how about we talk about business? Rue Danzel. <laughs>